So how do we find the profit that a firm is going to get and how do we f use that profit maximization assumption to figure out how they're going to use different resources, okay? We've got our profit function over there. Everything is mirrored for me, guys. There. All right. We've got our profit function, revenue minus costs, and we need to add to that a couple other pieces of information that we might have. First off, we have a production function. And at this stage in the video, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to put in anything specific. We'll do an example down the road. But we've got a function of capital and labor. And we can plug that in. And now we have that profit is equal to P instead of Q. We'll say times F of K and L minus WL plus RK. So I just substituted that guy in for that, okay? Let's go one step further. For this first run through, let's assume that this is a short run problem. In the short run, we're gonna say that only L can change, okay? This is a situation where capital K is fixed at some level which we'll call K with a, a bar over it, okay? So what this is sort of saying is that this is a problem of figuring out like how many wait staff to hire today, this week, knowing what prices and wage rates are, but you can't change your kitchen, you can't change any of the machinery. Or it's, you know, you've got a factory and you're trying to decide how many workers to put in it today, but you're stuck with the factory you've got. You can't buy more capital or less. That's a long run problem because it takes longer to adjust these big expensive machines uh, and we'll do precisely that problem uh, in a little bit but let's start simple where there's only one choice so what we've done here is a firm wants to maximize profit and we've we're going to steadily reduce the problem to one choice which is how much labor should i hire if i want to maximize my profits okay and we're going to substitute in now this information and say that profit is equal to the price times my production function, my production function capital stock is stuck at K with a bar over it, or just K bar. My labor is free, that's a choice, minus WL plus R. And instead of having, we're going to add a bar over that K too. So the only thing we have to choose is labor, okay? And the way that we're going to think about this is with derivatives, okay? we're going to think about how does profit change if we change the labor that we demand, all right? We're going to take the derivative of, lab of profit with respect to labor, and let's just do that first. Well, P is, is the price. It's given. We can't affect it. The firm, remember, we're assuming can't choose the price. It's not affected by labor. But the amount he produces is, okay? So we take the derivative of that function with respect to L. We can't go any further than this because we don't know what this function is. We can just write the symbol for the derivative of that production function with respect to L, the partial derivative. If we go to the cost function, we've got uh, W times L, so the derivative of that is just W. And then we've got R times K with a bar, but that's not affected by L, so it's not present. This equation here has a special name. It's called the first order condition. Okay, and we're gonna use these all the time in this course. So I'm gonna, let's see, get rid of this circle. All right, so what does this first order condition tell us? What is it useful? Well, the first order condition is the derivative of profit with respect to labor or any different input. And in this case, we're using labor. What's that, what's that telling us is that as we change labor, how does profit change? Okay, And we can see there's kind of two effects. If you add one more laborer, you produce more sales because uh, this here is the marginal product of labor. The derivative of the, of the production function with respect to labor is the marginal product of labor. If we multiply that P by P, that's telling us uh, you add one more laborer, you're gonna generate a little bit more output. The amount of output you generate is equal to the marginal product of labor. 
and the amount of sales that that translates into is how much that stuff sells for, okay? But there's another side of it, which is that you also have to pay this guy. So we subtract off from that the wage you pay, okay? This thing could be positive. And what does that mean? It means that if the first order condition is greater than zero, uh, that means more labor equals more profit or leads to more profit. It's a situation where the extra revenue, this part of the equation that you get from that worker offs is greater than the extra cost of that worker, okay? We can also have this guy be negative, all right? If that's the case, more labor leads to less profit. In that case, we've got this W, which is greater than this. So we have some extra sales, but the amount of extra sales we get is less than the extra wage rate we get. Okay. And so if this thing is negative, it's telling us that we don't want to hire any more labor because it's going to reduce our profits. And in fact, we want to reduce our labor because if the first order condition is negative, that also says that if you reduce L, you increase profit, okay? So in both cases, we can't actually be at the profit maximizing point yet. If either of these is true, profit is not being maximized. Why is that the case? Because if profit was actually at the maximum possible level, there would be no way to increase it further. And these conditions are telling us that, well, actually, if you hire more labor, you get more profit if you're in this first condition up here. Or if you're down here, it's telling you, actually, if you just cut back some of your labor, you're going to make more profit. In either case, you can't already be at the maximum. Instead, the maximum profit is going to be attained at first order condition equal to zero. Okay. We want that first order condition to be equal to zero. That means that if we change our labor or our in any direction, if we increase it a bit or decrease it a bit, profit stays at the same level. Okay. Any reduction in sales is exactly offset by the reduction in our labor costs. And if we increase labor, any increase in sales is exactly offset by the increase in wages. And if we're at that tipping point right in the middle, that's telling us that you can't do any better. You can't maximize profit anymore. And so you're at the profit maximization point. Now, that's typically going to be the case, but let's go into sort of a complicating technical point that you should know about, but hopefully won't come up too much in this course.